Well, we're going to do service a little bit different this morning. Not standard SOP or anything like that. But what I asked was that our pastoral couples would come and would share some things this morning on thanks, praise, family, whatever it may be that God would allow them, to, what God would put in their hearts. And I kind of figured it out it's probably going to be, and it's about, it'll still turn out about the normal hour. I think if Jones was getting up preaching and everybody preached for about 30 minutes, we'd, we'd probably get there. And uh, probably if I was preaching, it'd probably get there. So usually we, we're, we're done within an hour. So, but I want to allow our, I, I'm so uh, blessed and tickled just to have Pastor Luca here with us this morning. And then also the Joneses. And then, of course, my bride for the last 40-something years. <coughs> to be here with me, too. Praise the Lord. And we're going to ask and start and ask if our jo the Jones, Pastor Jones, and the Joneses, and uh, Big Jones and Little Jones, praise the Lord, would, <laughs> would come. And whatever God puts on their heart. And then we're going to ask the Pastor Luca and his wife to come forth and whatever God puts on their heart and then we'll close it out a little bit Merlin and I'm just going to probably close it out I might even sing a song and close it out but so praise the Lord I got a song I've been working on praise the Lord we won't do that one today praise the Lord amen so with the Joneses praise the Lord let's put our hands together and thank the Lord hallelujah praise the Lord amen Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Man, the pastor uh, sort of sprung this one on us, and, and like he said, this is not standard operating procedure. And then my wife said, well, I left my notes at home. Well, I don't, I don't do the note thing. I mean, as far as something like this goes anyway. But he, he, he said to, to share what was, what was on our heart. So it, tonight, I mean, today, if you turn to Philippians 4, know it and it was, you know if, if some of you wonder how come I use a couple of scriptures well that, that stuff is working for me <laughs> amen and I pray that it begins to come alive in, in your heart uh, because one of the things that I, I struggle with personally my, my wife and I like a, uh, we like the family thing how, how many know there's attack on the family especially during this season Man, you know, the, devil, the devil's busy trying to disrupt and confuse and, and cause strife and, and envy in, in the midst of us. And, and one thing that God dealt with me months ago with the scripture in, in Philippians 4, 6, and, it, and the, just, just the first part of it, actually, uh, 4, 6, and it says, be anxious for nothing. I, and I can... I can lay on that one probably for weeks but be anxious for nothing and for those of you who who suffer some anxiety and i'm not talking about stuff like anxiety attacks what i'm what i'm talking about are just situational cues and and you get nervous and you start to fear because you don't think god's gonna come through for you we serve a mighty and an awesome god and my wife and i in, in especially during this time because a lot of things we differ she's this is her season she like you know, she liked to put up lights and have about nine Christmas trees throughout the house and, and that kind of thing. And yesterday she was out there in the cold and rain. I felt, I felt kind of sorry for her, but I ain't going to help her. Because <laughs> I, I told, you know, she kept coming back in there, sitting down on the, on the, th you know, on the, on the ottoman like, and I'm sitting behind her, I'm watching the game. And I know she wanted to say, me to say, well, I'll come help you, honey. But I said, no, this is your Ishmael. You take care. Because you, she likes, no, no, see, you know, she likes, this is her season. And she likes the lights and the trees and, and, and the cooking. And, and this is probably the only celebrative time that she has. So I just let her do her thing. And like I said, it was raining and cold. I know she wanted me to help. I, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't. And that's when the scripture came, be anxious for nothing. 
Because, I, I mean, you know, sometimes you feel sorry. You know, the, you, you feel sorry for them. You know, they're going all out. Yeah, they're going all out. And, you know, you, the little begging, little pitiful little side that they got, like, yeah, yeah any, any married couples in here, any married people, y'all know what I mean. You know, the, the, the spouse are lip hanging all on the ground. They want you to say this and say that. And, you know, I, I've decided I'm going to stand my ground. Now, I'm not advising y'all to do that now. That's, that, this is my house. So, you know, yeah, you can't operate like 614 does. But, but you know, I've learned her. And, you know, some, I want her to, calm, you know, bring it down a little bit. You know, not two trees, one tree. <laughs> you know, not a whole bunch of lights, a string. You know, that kind of thing. But, again, she goes all out. But, and, and I appreciate her. But we've learned that in our getting along, that some things you just got to adjust to. And I adjusted yesterday real well. <laughs> Amen. But, but uh, again, this whole family issue, Urban and I have decided that on this year, we're going to concentrate more on the family and, and parenting because we saw the need here at the ministry for that. And, and I believe that God has, has placed us and, and them and, and some of you others as trophies to be looked at as representatives of what a family is supposed to look at look like now again don't don't think that stuff don't happen <laughs> did y'all see me jerk i thought she's gonna hit me just now no don't 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 ever think that stuff does not happen because stuff happens but see we're fully persuaded that god can see us through anything that goes on we, we've been married 43 years and um, 42. Well, see, I feel like I've been married for, <laughs> she said 42. I'm, I'm a year ahead. I, I withstood a year more punishment than she has. But this whole, you know, we, we, we've been married <laughs> for that long. But, and, and, and God has kept us. You know, it, it didn't, believe me, it, listen real close. It didn't start out this way. I'm going to say it again. It didn't start out this way. But now I'm, I'm, I'm a happy man. Amen. But hope. But it didn't start out that way. Amen. And even now, sometimes I have to do the Acts 26 too. I have to think myself happy. Because all the times things are not happy. You know, we've been through some struggles. She had cancer, and, and I had cancer. And then we had a whole bunch of other stuff just go on, and, and God's kept us. And, and you know, in case y'all won't know how come I'm so serious, it's, it's because of stuff like that. You know, God's kept me when, when other folks, you know, one thing we've learned is you can't put your trust in man. You know, and we, we go through a people test all the time. And sometimes she my people test. And, and, but I'm, I pass with flying colors and, and only because I've learned to trust, to trust God. And, and um, the first part of the scripture, be anxious for nothing. I, I've just learned that if, if I just give it up, he can't work if I'm trying to work. And some stuff I have to take my hands off of. Some things I have to take my hands off of because I can't work it. That, that's his job. And when I did that, man, I'm the happiest man in the world. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I know she got something to say. Okay, okay, okay. But you took up the whole five minutes. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I, um, I'm just grateful. And every day I read that sign up there. Every day. Every day that I'm here so I don't forget you know and it's not about me I read it every day and then when I'm home I, 
I know I gotta know it by heart and everything give thanks and I, I'm a happy happy person I love the Lord I love people I'm a people person I mean I know I make people mad but I'm still <laughs> but I'm still a people person I you have your ways and I have my ways but I still love you whether I offend you or whatever and, and people today are they come back and let you know that you know you offended me and I say well I'm sorry but I was looking over your head it wasn't you that I was talking to you know <laughs> but anyway I, I thank God because my scripture when I first got saved was Mark 11 22 and that's four words have faith in God and that got that's what got me over because I, I would put my trust in man before I knew that scripture and now I have faith in God and I thank God for my brother and my my daughters in the other room and my grand oh, she's doing like this my grand that's my grandbaby and oh we she acts just like me <laughs> She does act like me. And, but Joan and I, I, I was mean and hateful and cold and rude when I met him. I don't know what it was that he saw in me. And, but I, I, I met him, and, and I, he had on this shirt, and this sweater, this sweater, and it just, woo wee that was a bad sweater. And, <laughs> and I said, And I said, ooh wee, that's mine. Talking about the man in the sweater. And it was months before I got to see him again because he was an airman and I didn't like airmen. And because I always thought that airmen would go and, and you know, you, they make love to you and they leave a baby and they never came back. That's what I thought about an airman. And so I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna go to the, in Rantoul to go to the uh, base because they were airmen. And so this lady begged me and begged me, and I went, and I had met him at the Elks Club, and okay, that was it. I knew he was an airman, so I would never see him again. And I went, and who was at the front door? I said, don't I know you? And he said, no. <laughs> and the lady said, that's that man at the Elks Club. And I said, oh, and I went, walked past him, and then I went backwards. Yeah, I know you. <laughs> anyway, after that, we met, did what we did at, uh, did we, nothing happened that night. Mm -mm. <laughs> I, I'm thanking God that I'm saved. Hallelujah. Clean your, mind, your minds up. But after that, we met and, uh, I guess we were married. We were together for two years, and then we got married, and and we've been together for 42 years. And let me tell you, the 42 years have been an adventure, a journey. <laughs> it's an adventure. It's an, a journey. You don't have to go to Africa or uh, Haiti's anywhere. Ours was everything going on. <laughs> I am grateful for the best man in the world. I said it the last time I was up here, but I truly have a jewel. I have a jewel. And the thing about the jewel is he taught me. He taught me a lot of things. He said, well, how are you going to know if you can fly if you don't fly? How are you going to know about this different meal if you don't taste it? And so I, I, he, he taught me a lot of stuff, he, and he taught me how to be still. I'm, I'm, I'm still tr in training. <laughs> I am still in training. Oh, snap. And, <laughs> but I love it because there's so many things that he, 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 he's from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm from Danville. And I went to Richmond. I didn't like it. And I came back, 
and to me it was country, and he said, how more country can you get than Danville? <laughs> Chickens is running in the yard, cows sitting out in the yard. <laughs> But let me tell you something, and, th and this goes out to everybody. You might not be married, but you can enjoy life. You, you, in, our, in our marriage, uh, we have laughter. But the older we get, it's really laughter now because he's in the living room looking at the game, and I'm in the bedroom looking at HGTV. And, but wait a minute, and I'll, I'll holler, honey! And he seems not to hear me. I don't understand that we ain't got but three bedrooms. You know, not 34, three. So I dial his number. I dial the number. Uh, honey, it's like uh, Serena on T.D. Jakes. She said her husband talked and ministered to so many people that he left her out. She went in the garage and called him. Uh, I need some help. I need some counseling. So that's what I do now. I call him on the phone. Amen. You can't get them, call them on the phone. But I, I'm telling you now in this last minute that be happy and put your trust in God. And anything that hinders you from being happy with your mate or even being alone, it says Mark 11, 23, uh, speak to those mountains. Speak to them because you know who your enemy is. When it attacks, you know it's an attack. You have to speak to that enemy. That's what made us uh, happy. There's many times he's and went out, emptied the garbage, and didn't want to come back home. And I would stand at the door and wait to make sure he's coming in the back or the front. I could see both doors. And so I would go and get, go look peep. Through. He wouldn't see me peeping. I'd be peeping, you know, and say, oh, my man come back. <laughs> but, that, <laughs> but that's what makes you happy is when you make it joyful. See, what, when we get so caught up and t intensive about what's going on in the home, hey, that home is gonna be there when you are dead and gone. I'ma enjoy that home. I'ma walk them floors, I'ma play on them floors, I'ma lay on them floors, I'ma enjoy them floors, because somebody else gonna enjoy them. So why not enjoy them while I'm there? Hallelujah. So I enjoy my home, and it's only because of God. God showed us through the Word how to treat each other. Amen. One, one, one last thing, then we're going to sit down. Um, if it had not been for God, it wouldn't have been an us. And man, we, you know, he became the rock. And we had to be fully persuaded that if God could do, if God could fix anybody, he can fix us. Because we were some broke, disgusted, miserable people. And man, and, and the enemy preys on your misery. And if we had not have known God, then we wouldn't be able to stand here today and say I'm, we're happy. Because it was all it was all God. It wasn't none of me, it wasn't none of her. This was, this was all this was all the Lord's doing. So when you see her dancing and us praising God, it's because we know that if it had not been for him, there would be no us. And see, this this thing is not about it, it's about living the kind of life that God wanted you to live. And I know he didn't want me miserable. I'd heard too much about this awesome God that he would keep me miserable not enjoying my life, my wife, my kids, and life in general. So we just made a decision. If you're going to do this, we're just going to let you do it. you got to get out of God's way. He don't need your help. And if God tells you that's how you are and you need to change that, guess what, Bubba? You need to change whatever God tells you to change. Forget about you being comfortable and about your, here's a big one for y'all, about your pride. See, pride don't just mean you proud. No, pride means you're stubborn. And sometimes God will point out things that you need to change about your life. And you're so busy trying to change their life until you won't change yours. You got to get... If you're in a relationship today, you got to get the other one out of your mind, out of your memory. Sure, she belongs to you. God gave her or him to you. But there's nothing. You don't have enough tools in your toolbox to change them. You don't have a tool to fit them. 
That's all God's doing. But he can't do it as long as you keep thinking you can fix them. It will not work. The big thing, and we're being seated. God told me, and I know y'all get tired of hearing this, but when God told me one day in my bedroom, whatever she does, it's none of your business. See, I cry now because I, I, me and God had, I wanted to box. <laughs> what do you mean she ain't none of my business? I, you don't, I live with this woman. I had to deal with her. You ain't got to deal with her. It ain't that stupid. And now just saying it is even sounds stupider. <laughs> you don't have to. Yes, God does have to deal with her. But in his own time and in his own way. And there's some things now, you know, we still disagree about. But we've learned that two can walk together if they agree. But here's the key. Somebody got to deny their self. Oh, man, if y'all can get that one, y'all got somebody has to deny themselves now you might be saying it ain't gonna be me that's pride dude that's pride no sometimes you got to say i might be right but i could be wrong you ain't always on the right side sometimes you could be wrong and let god fix it amen thank y'all for letting us share just want to bless God. It's my first time in the church. And I told my husband, I said, I'm happy about one thing. The church is not dead. Yeah, because you go to some places, it's as cold as anything. So I bless God for everybody in the house. The Lord has laid on my heart Psalm 65. Yeah, Psalm 65. And I'm going to read from the Amplified uh, Version that says, verse 5, I have two verses, verses 5 and 11. Verse 5 says, Blessed, happy, fortunate to be envied is the man, and I'm going to put is the woman, whom you choose and cause to come near, that he may dwell in your courts. It is a privilege to always be in the presence of the Lord. And irrespective of your situation, of your circumstance, count yourself blessed to be in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And you are here because you are still alive. And once you have life, there is hope. And lastly, verse 11 says, You water the fields for us abundantly, you settle the ridges of it. You make the soil soft with showers, blessing the sprouting of its vegetation. Verse 12, you crown the year with your bounty and goodness, and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. As uh, 2015 comes to, you know, is rolling to an end, I want to assure everybody in the house that it's not yet over. Now, it's not yet over. And that is why uh, that verse 12 says, you crown the year with bounty and goodness. And I say that is the lot of everybody sitting down here, that because it's not yet over, you can still be expectant. You can still be hopeful. The best is yet to come. And I know that uh, before the year comes to an end, somebody is seated here who is going to come here to share testimonies. Because the Lord has asked me to tell you, it's not yet over. Amen. You are in for a surprise. Amen. Amen. We, we want to sing briefly, and I will share. Okay? Then, Pastor, you can sing last for us. Because uh, often when we get to a crossroad, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. You don't know any prayer, even though you are a pastor. And you are just looking. And how God will come through, no one knows. So I was blessed when we were in the Sunday school. I told them I didn't want to come to church today. But the Sunday school, uh, it was a blessing. 
a big, big blessing because my spirit was ministered to. Which is very, that's why you don't miss Sunday school. Never, never miss Sunday school. That is a place where you can interact. You can pour out and nobody will say anything. And uh, we have this song. God is the Lord over moments and the time. God, God is, is the Lord, Lord over moments and the time. Time after time, every day, every day. Moment after moment, every time. We've got power over moment and the time. God is the Lord over moment and the time. Again, we want to thank God for the grace to be here now. About two or three years, I was there alone in order to come and uh, see our daughter Ruth. And uh, this time around, we were also, so let's come around as a couple. Because when I came, I came alone, and now we are together. And that's why we come. There's no other church we can go fellowship when we're in Champagne than to come here. Uh, Bring greeting from our brethren in South Africa. We are based in South Africa. Uh, we've been there now since 2003. Now, I have this to share in the book of Job. Thank God for you, Pastor. Right? Uh, it's good to be practical. It's the best. The Bible is the same everywhere. But it depends on how you apply it. It depends. So Job chapter 14, verse 14. The later part. Job said, I will wait until my change come. I will wait. So if they are to ask you at this moment, what are you waiting for? You should know what you are waiting for. Everybody got a dream. Everybody has a vision. Everybody has a purpose. But only those that wait for their dream can see the reality. Only them can have testimony. Only them can be bold to share anywhere that God can do this. But those who cannot wait, they have something else to add to the name of Jesus. They have run ahead of time. And God cannot be glorified in their life. But Job said, all the days of my hard service, I will wait until my change comes. And when in Job chapter 42 from verse 1, Job said, Now I know that none of your plans under it none. We don't know how long it took, but 14, 14 said, I will wait. But in chapter 42, Job now said, Now I know that none of God's plan can be thwarted. It's not easy waiting. It's not easy. You will be alone. Nobody will see you. Your praise like God has travel. Everybody is giving testimony, sharing their testimony. Your own testimony is not available. You look at life as if life is too hard on you. But at the end of the tunnel, there is a light. At the end of the tunnel, there is a light. Only those who wait can live to tell what the story looks like but those who don't wait they have no story to tell so it's a blessing again to be available now and it's a blessing to be in the sunday school today it is a wonderful day in my life my my wife knows what i'm going through no problems just about ministry nothing 
But you get to a crossroad ministry when you think, God, where are you? Where are you? And so I'm ministering from what God has ministered to me today. All the days of my waiting, I will still wait. Because it will come true. It will come true. And when God does come true, the world... I don't know how. The story will look like in the next two years when we come again. Amen. Because today, and I'll be able to tell you why I'm talking about Job 14, 14. It's not everybody who can wait. But when you're waiting, we got a daughter. She came around and they said, Pastor, this one come, their prayer is answered. That one come, you pray for them, their prayer is answered. How about me? I have been coming, I come in the morning, I come in the afternoon, I come in the VG. My prayer is not yet answered. And I looked up, I looked down, how do you answer that? I'm not the one that answer prayer, is God. So I look at the same girl in the face and I call her by name. And I say, is your dream worth waiting for? Is it what, I didn't see the dream, I didn't know about the dream. But God created for a purpose. So can you wait for him to come true for you? If you can wait, then we can support you with prayer. Because he is the only one who answered prayer. Only one. The only one. No pastor. No prophet. Nobody. And it's God and God alone. And so that's why the Lord gave us that song. Anytime I'm tired, we sing it. Anytime we come together, because he is the Lord over moment and every time. And those who belong to him, the Lord will see you through. Amen. And when he brings you into your season, the world will be marveled. Amen. And they will be surprised. Yes. Then they ask the question, how did you make it through? Then you to go tell them, go ask Jesus. Amen. Go and see Jesus. The Lord bless you. God, thank you. Bless you all. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. How many thousands of miles they have to come just to give you that word? Hallelujah. Right on time. Hallelujah. God. I'm telling you, I just get tickled. I just get excited, and I just one more time I get to see just how big, how big God really is. And nothing escapes it. He sees it. And I just get tickled about it. I'm going to ask my wife to come at this time, and what she do, and then she's going to leave me the other hour and a half, so that way, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Praise, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. I really didn't have a scripture, but this one came to mind, and I'm just going to read a couple verses of it, and it's coming from Proverbs, the 31st chapter, starting at the 10th verse. It says, who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil. All the days of her life, she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like a merchant, ships, she brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. May a blessing be added unto the word of God. I really didn't understand, I really didn't know this scripture until like years later. But me and my husband, we've been together for it seemed like forever. Because <laughs> I was a young girl when I met him. And 
Yes, he swept me off my feet. I'm not going to say anything wrong. Praise God. But, <laughs> it has been 40 some years since we've been together. <laughs> praise God. And I give God all the glory and the praise. You know, it's not easy being a wife. It's not easy being a mother. And without God, hey, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Without God, I don't know how you can make it. But because of God, he's taught me how to be a wife. He's taught me how to be a mom. Praise God, because it doesn't come with a book. We have to learn for ourselves. And even though I watched my mom and my dad, sometimes things wasn't easy. And things wasn't the way it should be in God's eyes. But I thank God that I can read the word and I can learn what a wife is, what a mom is. I had to go through some things. And it's not easy. And I thank God that he's in my life. And I give him the glory and the praise. You know, I was raised up in a holiness church. And I had my grandmother, my mom, and my aunties. It was sort of like a family church. And that's all I saw. And I was always around elderly people. And, I, and that's the reason why I love being around the older women. Because you can learn so much wisdom from them. And yes, sometimes they didn't do it by the book, but they did what they knew. And I just give God all the glory and the praise from what I learned from my mom. And she was a humble woman. She got married when she was 13 years old. And back in those days, they had to marry their kids out so that they wouldn't, you know, be sold out or in slavery. And so my mom was young and my dad was a lot older. But I thank God just from the bringing up as knowing what a family is all about. And I thank God that mama kept us together. It was sort of like the chicks that be with the, the hen. She always puts them up under her. And my mom, she, we had, what, 17 brothers and sisters? But it was 15 that lived and two died. And now I have a brother that had passed. But I thank God for the family that God gave us. Because having eight sisters, you know, some of you, you just got one sister, two sisters. It's eight of us. And I just thank God for all of us just being together and how mama just, you know, keeping the family together. And she was the last sister of, my grandmother had like 21 kids. But all of them didn't live. You know, they had stillborns and, and stuff. But she was the last sister to live. And she took care of all my cousins. And, you know, they always came to mom. And I just thank God that through it all, even in my own family, you know, things don't always go the way you want them to go. We fight. We argue. We disagree. Me and my husband, we don't always agree on things. And he gets on me about stuff. But you know, I thank God for him because I love him. I love me some Irvin. I don't know about y'all, but I love me some Irvin. And he knows that. <laughs> we really have been through a whole lot. We've been through grandmother's passing. Dad's passing. My mom passed, but his mom still lives. And when you go through so much like that, having a child die, you know, it's a lot that comes with being a wife and being a mom. You know, you don't have all the happy times. There's sad times. There's, you know, times when you're confused. Times when you're angry, when you're mad. But you know, only by the grace of God. Hey! Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord! He helps us 
us through those things. And like I said, you know, I remember my Aunt Fanny. My, all my mother's sisters had boy names. Aunt Dump, Aunt Johnny, Cornelius, which was my mom. But it was a few of them, Lucy, Jesse. And I mean, it was just, I don't know, I, I guess my grandmother just wanted boys. But you know, I thank God for all of them. They all had different lives that they were living. And just bringing up, coming up in that generation, I mean, I learned a whole lot. And I learned with my mom to death do us part. And I thank God that I don't want nobody else. If something should happen to Irvin, I don't want to be married again. I don't want to go through all that stuff again because they don't make men like they used to. And I thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That he is an older man. You know, even in our family, with my boys, and I have all boys, five boys. And I really didn't miss having a girl until I had my grandbaby. And I love that baby. <laughs> and I just thank God that even in not having girls, God gave me girls among you. And I thank God that it was, you know, even being here at Restoration, God knows what he's doing. God knows who he put with, who he put with. And it might not, you might not be able to go through the things that I'm going through. You might not be able to be strong like I am now because of the things that I went through. But you know, I thank God, even for my trials, that right now, I'm strong in God. I used to put, my, before me and my husband got married, we lived together for two years. And I was just fed up. Unless he put a ring on my finger, I was going out there, I'm gonna find me somebody that want me. But he came to me, he got on his knees, and he asked me to marry him. He got on his knees. And he asked me to marry him. And that was the day. My dad hasn't, my dad didn't give any of my sisters away but me. And they envied me. Well, why did dad give you away? He didn't even come to my wedding. I told him I'm special. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I loved me some daddy. And I don't know what it was, but when I asked daddy would he give me away, he said yes. And it wasn't in Cape Girardeau, it was in Illinois. And he drove to Carbondale to give me away. I was so blessed. I mean, I was so special and so blessed. And you know, God is just like that with us. He got all of these kids and every one of us is special in his eyes. I mean, what kind of love like that? You don't want to serve a God like that? I mean, he is so, I mean, he can individually love each one of us. And that is so much love. So I'm telling you, don't look for love in all the wrong places. Look for love in Jesus because he's the only one that can show you what love is all about. He can show you what a husband's supposed to be like. He can show you what a wife is supposed to be like. A mom is supposed to be like. And like I said, everything ain't easy. Raising boys. My mom used to always say raising boys is easy. Have boys. But, you know, she, back in the days it probably was easier. 
But boys, to me, they are hard. But with the help of the Lord, he'll help you to raise them boys. So don't give up. Wait on God. Like the brother said, wait until your change comes. Because God has somebody out here for every one of us. And some of you, he wants you to stay single because he wants you to just lean and depend on him and pray for those that are out here. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't give up nothing to have the things that I have today. I love God, and I love him with all my heart and soul. And I love my husband. It was a time that I, I loved him, but I didn't want submissive. I was not submissive at all. I want to say this because God will put you in your place. And I even taught submitting to him. You can submit to your man, but I sure ain't submitting to mine. He always telling me this and that. He want to love on everybody else but me. That's the way I felt. But I was wrong. And God had to show me through a message that he gave about submission. And he just emphasized, if you don't re emphasize that if you don't receive the word from the messenger, you don't receive God. And I was mad at him even saying that. But I had to look in the Bible and I had to read it for myself. And God wanted me to receive the word of God. That was from God. He was telling me, yes, you're supposed to submit. And I had to go back to people and say, you know, what I was saying was wrong. God expects for us to submit ourselves to our husband. And after then, I shut my mouth. I was obedient. And I submitted myself to him. Believe me, God knows what he's doing. And I give God all the glory and the praise because he is so worthy to be praised. God, I thank you. Thank you. Because he will be a mother. He will be a father. He will be a sister, a brother. He will be whatever it is that you need. But trust in God. Trust in God. It's not always easy. But if you just submit yourself to God, everything else will come in place. Truly, I just give God all the glory and the praise. And I love you, Irvin. I love you, Irvin. I love you, Irvin. And I love the Lord. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I would not have a life without Marilyn being in it and without the Lord being in it. I, I came to a conclusion that's not life. That's not life. Not for me. That I need the Lord and I need Marilyn in my life. We're going to be real brief here. It's my intentions. But I was, as I was sitting there listening, and I kind of knew it was going to happen. But I knew also, too, is that, and Jones got up and said something. Pastor Jones got up, and, and, and he had met, mentioned, because we had talked for a little bit about this whole thing, concept about family, and the spirit of the family ought to be in the church. Let, let me share something with you here. And as I said, I'm not going to be here long either. But if there is not a family spirit in the church, it is not the church. Those are some harsh words, if you're not there. That the spirit, and, and, I, and it made me stop for a moment and just do a little bit of research because I had to really deal with this family thing. So that's one of the reasons why I said we we're going to spend some time here dealing with family because, see, it's the most basic, fundamental part of the church is that binding together as family that makes the church operate. 
But just let me just give you some. I, I did some research, and part of my research was on the word family. You know, I like words. But as I was, there were some definitions that came up that began to make me think. One of them in the Hebrew, uh, mispaka and pamalia, the Greek word, ekoyen, ia. But it was the next word that got my attention, patria. And most of us have heard patria. But patria is also the word that we use for father. So here we got the word patria being used for father. And then we got the patria being used for family. And it makes you start thinking about things. Something you said a little earlier, and here's what you said. You said, the family is under attack. And there's not one of us who can't witness to the fact that families are going through some stuff. And in fact, even the institution of family itself is under attack today. Because we got more things, and we talked about this here a few weeks ago, but more things that tend to introduce and change the definition of family. But when we read the definition according to the scriptures and even Webster, he talks about this consistency of a parents and, and children and having common uh, ancestors, descendants, and this biological connect that makes us together. And as I was sharing before, we didn't got to a place where anything is family, but God had special things that he related to his family because he knew that was what's going to have to go forth. Now, here's the crazy part about all of this as I was sitting there thinking about it. I looked at a few scriptures, and I'm just going to run down through them real quick, not time enough to do anything because I know and I'm watching the clock. We're going to be out of here. But some scriptures got my mind as I kept thinking about it. Notice Ephesians 3, 14, 15. For this reason I bow down my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Acts 17, chapter 28th verse. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like to gold or silver or stone graven by art or uh, graven by art and man's device. When all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also was baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove up on him. And a voice came from heaven and said, you are my beloved son. Uh, the gene genealogy in Luke 3, chapter, 3rd chapter, 21st verse says, Now Jesus himself began his ministry at about 30 years of age, being, as we suppose, the son of Joseph. And then you notice it goes through all the sons of, the sons of, the sons of. And then you get down to the 38th verse, and it says, And it says, The son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. Now, there's a purpose behind all this. John 1.14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 3.16, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Romans 8, listen to this one here. There is therefore now no condemnation for them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. It made me start thinking because just a little bit further down, oh, just a little bit further down, it says this, and it says, and, and for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are called children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. For the, uh, 19, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. There seems to be a common thread in all of this. All the way back up to Father, all through all of this, there's a common thread. God is stuck own family and so as he starts talking as I look at all those scriptures we see words that relate the family sons those are words that relate the family father those are words that relate the family are you following me you see to everything in there from the very beginning in the garden it was always about family it was always about family from the beginning all the way up even when you get into revelations right to the very end it's still about family now if it's that strong if family is that important if that trend from uh, beginning in genesis all the way through revelation if that is true that every time we pick it up we keep w running into words that deal with family 
These are family words. Sons and daughters and children. Those are family words. You follow? If that is true, no wonder the family is under attack because it started with family and the church is supposed to act like, act like a family, look like a family because that is the spirit of God, that patria that is working in the church today that says we are one blood, one father, one family. Are you getting it? You see, it was always about family. He said to the family in the heavens and in the earth. It's always been. So if you were Satan and you wanted to keep the church divided, what you would introduce is this thing, this strife that would keep the family from getting strong because when the family, the church doesn't operate in the spirit of family, which is what all of this started from the beginning and even the coming of Jesus about being a son, it was always about that, then the church is weak. And that the greatest thing that we could ever do was embrace the fact that we're family. That's the greatest thing we could ever do. Because when I start seeing the church as family, now notice what the scripture said. Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That when we give in to this spirit, and that, that scripture there he says in, in Romans 8, when, he, when he, he speaks and he says something about uh, the, the, those who follow after the spirit, you see, instead of after the flesh, well, it made me start thinking, what if the Spirit of God, who is so obsessed with family, is saying that if the church really going to walk triumphantly, that the church is going to have to embrace this spirit of family. That when we walk after the spirit of family, which is the very heart of God, then there is no gate there is no wall. There is no attack that the enemy can throw up on us that we cannot shake it off and walk in victory. And not only that, but the greater we walk as a family, the more we realize our own strength. And when we recognize our own strength, it's not about sitting back, keeping the devil off of you. It's about pushing our chest out, standing up straight and says, you know what? Not only are we strong as a family, but we're about to add to the number because we're going to take a sum of what you got and going to increase our numbers and extend the borders of our tent because God is involved with family. So everywhere, and if you think that I just made all this up trying to make something, go back and start reading in Genesis and see if God don't begin to deal you with family. It was not complete with Adam because that was not a family. Eve had to come. Adam couldn't replenish the earth by himself. Eve had to come so that the family of man could begin to move across the earth because that was what, what was going on. And so he starts saying, the son of, 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 all of it family. All of it's about that. And then we get into the New Testament. The first thing he does is he brags on the son. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He starts off bragging on him and talking about him. You see, and all through the scriptures you get that same message coming back again and again and again and again and again all the way through revelations you still continue to pick it up and it, here's the last part in the 21 and I think verse 8 21 somewhere in there but it, it says and Paul and John says I looked up and I beheld a new heaven and a new earth but he says and coming down from out of the heavens you remember what he says he speaks of this city but then he uses these strange words. He says, adorned as a bride. Family. 